If you've been watching my previous videos, one of my ongoing projects is the heavy drop shuttle experiment, where the whole point is to get a heavy, stubby wing shuttle to be passively stable and come back to the ground. Kind of like the space shuttle. Never since I watched those old videos of these lifting bodies released from a plane and start to fly back to the ground, I've always wanted to recreate it, but as a small scale RC experiment, and also to understand the aerodynamic principles of passive stability. I'll talk a little more about this when I start the experiment, but in this video, I want to focus on probably the most important part of getting this project to happen, and that's the plane. I wasn't anticipating making making a whole video on this, but I encountered a lot of obstacles and difficulties while testing these carrier designs and also learned a lot of key factors that go in designing a well-performing aircraft. I started building this first cargo slash carrier plane ever since I worked on my lifting body video, where I made these bathtub looking gliders out of insulation foam and fiberglass, and the plane I was building was intended to drop those. The aircraft design was pretty simple and easy to build, it was just based off a previous plane that flew well that I just scaled up. The one thing I did differently was using aluminum flat bar as a motor mount. Originally, I thought this would make it stronger and also make it possible to adjust the thrust angle, but for whatever reason, the aluminum was super weak and would bend every time I landed, which wasn't ideal. After pretty much finishing the whole plane, I messed around with the drop mechanism until I got this simple, single servo release that would hold onto a ring. Overall, I would say the plane flew alright. It definitely had some weird flight characteristics, but it flew good enough to where I was ready to do its payload test. Now the two major issues with this plane were that first, my landing gear was too short. This made it so the clearance from the bottom of the airframe to the ground was relatively small, which isn't great for trying to test out different types of shuttle gliders. And second, the release mechanism itself was way in front of the center of gravity. It really should have been directly on line of the CG. And since the shuttles were pretty heavy, it caused a huge upset and bounce while flying. So most of the time, it would take off super nose heavy, then fly back tail heavy. Not great. After that, I covered the plane with an extra layer of foam to make it more durable, shifted the drop mechanism a few inches back to get it in line with the CG, and then made a new wing. I give this wing a longer cord to hopefully make its turning performance smoother, and also added flaps to improve takeoff performance. <laughs> But even with these modifications, it seemed to fly much worse than before. It was just a huge pain to fly, and it always felt like I wanted to fall back down to the ground. Now I think the two major issues were first the CG. It was most likely too far back, even though it was about where I thought it should have been. But secondly, and probably more important, was the size of my horizontal stabilizer. I'm pretty sure what was happening is that my horizontal stabilizer was not providing enough pitch stability. And knowing the fact my wing was bigger, the size of the tail should have also been bigger. This was most likely why the tail would continue the drop even with a reasonable CG. After some miserable flights, I moved my run cam all the way to the front with some other weights to get the CG to be further forward. But this ended up being a terrible idea because the plane still flew atrociously, and when it crashed, the stiff nylon propellers strike the camera, shattering the screen. You can also see just how unstable the flight was, even with a few weights in the front, which most likely means the small tail was the culprit. So I just realized this, but apparently that crash actually bent the this like X section, which usually never happens. There's some serious stuff. I think it bent this one too a little bit. Yeah, I think it did. After that, I made this new airframe with a super thick fuselage to make it more durable and a much larger horizontal stabilizer. Now compared to before, it was flying a lot better and more gracefully, but there still was the issue of the tail dropping and the difficulty in turns. I was also very disappointed in how much a tiny breeze would affect it. With the size and weight of this plane, I felt like it should have been more immune to winds, but I guess not. To hopefully fix the tail dropping issue, I made a much longer and bigger horizontal stabilizer. And for whatever reason, I also added this cabin thing that made it look like an RC timber. Not for any practical setting, but just because I thought it looked cool. Probably one I have in hindsight. <laughs> And now it was pretty apparent the bigger tail improved this performance greatly, and it was flying a lot smoother. But after flying some more, it was becoming more apparent that it was struggling to climb, which isn't ideal knowing that I want to drop my shells from pretty high up. To fix this, I got a 35-36 motor on a 4S to get more power. <laughs> On this first flight, or takeoff with the drop shuttle, uh, I was simply just trying to take off too quickly, which resulted in P factor, which rolled the plane onto its left. And the reason why I was trying to take off so quickly is just because this place is just not ideal for flying planes. I really only have this like tiny dirt patch to take off, and everywhere else is just really tall grass. So I really should find a better place. But yeah, that crush was pretty bad. It also broke a propeller. You can tell that even with a much bigger motor, it was still not able to climb with the shuttle on board. 
seemed to have a height barrier where it was able to reach the height just fine, but would not be able to exceed it. Really weird. This made me think that it was just too no savvy. My CG was about 20% of the cord from the leading edge, which is pretty typical, but maybe a tiny change would fix the problem. But unfortunately, I didn't get any recording because we did a hand launch. But basically what happened is that it looked to fly a bit better, but after two seconds, it rolled hard left and smacked the ground. Kind of like what happened here. The cause was most likely because I was being too aggressive on throttle, leading to the aircraft to suffer from P factor. And that crash pretty much destroyed the whole plane, which was pretty frustrating. After that, and because the plane was pretty much obliterated, I decided to go back to what worked before, which was the glider like plane design. This plane was pretty much just like the old one, except it was bigger, had better wings, a bigger tail, a much larger and more durable landing gear, and was much more powerful since I was still using that 3536 motor. I also decided for the drop mechanism to design a 3D printed pod that could hold a 9 gram servo and that worked pretty well. After all that time it was awesome to see that this plane could fly beautifully. It was slow, had lots of lift, and tons of power. And the best part is that it was able to get to super high altitudes with only like 50% throttle which fixed the previous problem. The only issues I found with the high aspect ratio wing designs is that tighter turns can get a bit more tricky and wonky, and stalling can be more consequential, because high aspect ratio wings, although more efficient, do not perform great at high angles of attack, which ultimately leads to gnarly wingtip drops, so I might add flaps or slats in the future. And if you're wondering how it performs with a shuttle on board, here it is. You can tell it has no problem climbing now. So yeah, that's going to be pretty much it for this video. I did want to end up figuring out what the issue was with the previous one because I felt like that one should have performed good. Um, but I restarted the recording for the drop shuttle video and it's been pretty fun so far. So stay tuned for that. Also did some cool modifications to this plane. Um, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to get that video out too soon because I'm going to be going out for summer vacation for a few weeks. So yeah, um, kind of on a time crunch to get that video done, but... I'm going to leave you with some more videos of the plane flying, and yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, so yeah, bye.